My name is Thomas Bespo. I'm the resident writing consultant here at the CBS Library. And this is the uh, writing workshop. It's a very practical, hands-on uh, writing workshop. And uh, what I will do is explain a series of steps that can be used to compose a paragraph. There's lots of information at the blog where this video will be posted, where you're probably watching this video. Uh, that explains the philosophy behind this, the thinking behind it, uh, and goes into greater detail on the exercises. But uh, what I want to do in this workshop is just to go through the exercises, just one at a time, do the things that I suggest you should be doing when you're writing. And by way of definition, what kind of writing we're doing, I just want to make clear that we are focusing mainly on academic writing, which means we are focusing on the art of writing down what you know for the purpose of discussing it with other knowledgeable people. That's um, That means it's necessary that you pick something to write about that you know, uh, and something that you are writing for the purpose of opening it for criticism, opening it to the critical input of your peers. The other knowledgeable people that that definition uh, is that that definition mentions uh, should be people that you respect as intellectual equals, people who are knowledgeable about your subject matter as well, and who are therefore in a position. Um, to tell you if you have made mistakes. I sometimes say they are qualified to tell you that you are wrong, and if you are wrong, you want to hear it from them. So you're writing about things you know, things you think are true and have good reasons to believe are true, but you're writing it with the kind of clarity that would be required for somebody to recognize if you've made mistakes, if you're wrong about something, if their knowledge in some way could correct you, you're giving them an opportunity to do that. Uh, that's the uh, es essence of academic writing is this sort of, um, it's a style of writing that puts your ideas under peer review, right? It opens your, your ideas to the input of other people who have qualifications to evaluate and assess your ideas and help you improve them. Uh, that's the the art we're trying to develop here. If you do know something, I claim, then you are uh, able to compose a coherent prose paragraph about it. And that is what we're going to do today. We are going to compose a coherent prose paragraph about something you know, step by step, one step at a time. Um, and to do that, uh, I will share my screen, or not my screen really, but my workspace here. And uh, I will try to guide you through. Now, I think you may probably have heard at some point in your life that uh, when writing, you should not start on a blank page. Uh, that is a, just a very anxiety-provoking space. Anything could happen here in this blank space. Uh, and so what we want to do is give some structure to it right right away. And so I'm going to show you a trick that you can use that will forever abolish the blank the blank page. You will never have to face a blank page again uh, if you uh, adopt this trick. Now that's not the trick, but it's a uh, it's it's a pretty good start. Uh, if you have any kind of planning problem, just putting a line on a piece of paper is a very useful way uh, of creating a before and an after, a phase one and a phase two, anything like that. It gives you a little bit of structure to begin with. And it's Thursday today. And we're going to pretend today that we are working from one day to the next. We're going to do exercises that ideally would would spread over two days. Tomorrow is Friday. So what we have here is a is a little bit of a plan. We're going to make a little bit of a plan, and we will put in some exercises that we can do from Thursday to Friday. Uh, it's in here in uh, Denmark. It's already evening, 
Um, but what I'd like to to recognize is that uh, every day comes to an end, uh, and preferably the day comes to an end um, at a reasonable hour. So not uh, right before you put your head on the pillow. The day, in fact, ends uh, at you know late afternoon, early evening, and this is the moment. And I want to emphasize this: this is the moment when you rec you uh, decide um, or recognize. You can decide whether or not you're deciding or recognizing that you're not going to get any smarter, that you're not going to become more knowledgeable that you will not acquire any more truths between now and the time you go to bed and you, of course, sleep, and then you are not getting any input. Um, and at that moment, when you've decided you're not going to get any smarter today, you're not going to learn anything more, uh, I, I suggest you take five minutes, and we are going to now work through how to spend those five minutes. But at the end of the five minutes, you're also going to decide that as the first thing tomorrow morning, you are going to spend 27 minutes writing a paragraph. Now we're gonna do that right away in this workshop, but ideally what you would do is you would take five minutes the day before to decide what you're gonna say. You would then relax and sleep. And then the next morning you would get up and you would write that paragraph. Notice that means that when you're writing the paragraph, you're not going to be, um, facing a blank page, you will be facing a page that's already marked up with the idea you had the day before. That's the, the basic form of the discipline that we want to develop. Now, there's one little thing to keep in mind here. A lot of people, having heard of this method, think, here's a great thing. I can learn something today, decide to write about it, and then I can um, write the paragraph tomorrow. The problem with that is that uh, many people will discover that after they've written the paragraph, they realize that what they thought they learned yesterday is not true. Many of the things we learn are things we learn partly. Uh, sometimes we learn them badly. Sometimes we learn them wrongly. And what that means is that after we've written it, we realize that it's uh, false. So what I'm going to suggest you do is you recognize that before any given week, there is a weekend. And what you can do is choose something that you wrote that you knew already last week. And that's the thing you're going to be writing about tomorrow. So again, the ideal writing situation, the ideal writing moment is one that is decided the day before on the basis of something you knew already last week. This is an excellent strategy for planning out your writing uh, moment. Also, I recommend, uh, and if I was coaching you, I would insist, but I'm just going to recommend it here, uh, that when you do this, that you decide to uh, start at a very specific time. It doesn't have to be eight o'clock, but that you set the time for start and that you start exactly at that time allowing you to finish exactly 27 minutes later, take a three minute break and get on with your day. Uh, and of course, what we'll do in the workshop today is just work through every part of this process, every step of this process. All right, so let's unpack this little moment. Um, like I say, it shouldn't, when you're doing this regularly, it shouldn't take more than five minutes to do. And uh, what you will do in that moment is pick something that you know something about and articulate a piece of knowledge. Uh, you, so you'll make a claim or a statement about it. And I'm going to divide this into two uh, moments. And I, and I have a timer here. Um, here. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is I will set the timer um, for two minutes. And I'm going to give you two minutes, which is, uh, keep in mind, that is less than half of the five minutes that you would be giving yourself in this five-minute moment here. 
at the end of the day, when, you, when you're not going to get any smarter, remember, you're not going to learn anything new. This is not a research moment. This is after all the research is done for today. And you're going to be thinking about last week. You're not going to be thinking about what you just figured out, the problems you just solved today. And you're going to take two minutes to write down names of things that you know something about. That could be the names of concepts that you use in your theories. It could be the names of uh, people or organizations that you have some knowledge about. It could be names of places. It could be names of processes. Uh, just, just don't write sentences. Uh, write names of things that are the objects of your knowledge. Uh, so, for example, some people know a lot about iPhones. So maybe that's something that they would, uh, they could just write the iPhone. Uh, but other people know about iPhones a little more abstractly. So they might write about innovations or products, right? So words like that, innovation and product would count as well. Um, and then some people might have uh, knowledge about very abstract things like research and development or strategy or sense-making that kind of thing, very abstract things. You may even know something about justice. You may know something about uh, global warming, right? There's lots of different issues that you may know something about. The important thing is that you name the things that you know. And I'm going to give you two minutes to write down a list of things that you know something about. Two minutes can be a long time. So you're working on a list of three, four, or five items that you know something about you might i mean you could easily write down 10 or 20 things you know something about but try to uh concentrate on three four five maybe things that you know quite well so you really feel confident that you know a lot about them uh, and also that they are of some interest to you and you think they would be of interest to your peers Right, so you're really you're taking two criteria in here in your selection. You want to be very knowledgeable about these things, and you want them to be very interesting. Right. So I'm going to give you two minutes to write down. And for the purpose, I should say, for the purpose of uh, getting and receiving feedback, it's very useful that you do this in an electronic format, not on paper. So I'll give you two minutes. Uh, here we go. Two minutes to write down things you know something about. You've taken about one minute so far, so you've got a, another minute left. Uh, remember, these are things you know something about, and they're interesting. So you might even want to sort of rank order them in terms of which one is the most interesting. And you got 15 seconds left, so uh, make sure you've got a nice, um, a nice list of things that you are knowledgeable about and have an interest in and that you think a peer would also be interested in. That's the end of the two minutes. Now, I'm going to give you three minutes 
to fill out the rest of those five minutes. What we need to do is have you write sentences about some of those things. And you can actually focus on only one if you choose. If you just want to pick one of these uh, concepts, one of these things that you know something about, that is perfectly legitimate. You can also spend the three minutes trying out different objects. So what you're trying to do is say, I know I know something about this. What is it I know? What are some statements that I know to be true? And of course, you know where this is going. You're going to be writing a paragraph and a paragraph is about half a page of prose. So you're going to want uh, to pick something that you can say about these items that you are uh, writing about um, that will give you enough material to write half a page or so. Uh, so think about it in 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 those terms when you are deciding what you're going to say now. What we're coming up with here is what we'll end up calling the key sentence. And you'll get better and better at this every time you do it. So don't worry too much about whether or not you're getting this right. The important thing is just that you write sentences now. And I would encourage you to keep them relatively simple. So the examples I like to use are things like sense-making is a retrospective process, right? Um or uh, the internet has changed the way businesses communicate with their customers. Uh, one that I use in a more literary uh, vein would be something like Hamlet loved his mother, right? Uh, these are things that you can know on the basis of sources that you have uh, and about which much more can be said, right? So uh, they are, they're grammatically quite simple sentences but they have a lot of content just because the words that are being used there refer to a very rich reality. So try to take these things that you know something about and you find interesting and write a sentence that says something about which much more can be said. So I'm going to give you three minutes to write some sentences. Here we go. Three minutes are starting. That's a minute and a half that's passed. Um, you may have, and I know that you have uh, some sentences um, that uh, that are perfectly fine. Uh, experiment a little bit with them. Uh, you, you're going to be in a in about a minute's time. You're going to be picking one of the sentences that you've written as a key sentence for your paragraph writing. So. Keep working at it. Make sure it's simple, sharp, to the point, uh, and it indicates knowledge uh, that you have. And don't start writing the paragraph. You have 30 seconds to... Sharpen this one sentence about one thing that you know.
There are 10 seconds left. But of course, don't worry, you can rethink it later. That's it. So that took five minutes uh, of the actual activity. You got two minutes to think about something and three minutes to think about what you know about that thing and to, to write some sentences. Uh, every time you do this, and remember, um, remember that we're talking about something that you're doing at the end of the day. Every time you do this, you'll become better at reaching back into last week's knowledge, things that have been with you for a while, uh, and picking something that you can give your attention to writing-wise. Now, what you then ideally do is you would wait uh, until tomorrow morning to write, but we're going to go straight at it. Uh, so I'm just going to ask you to sort of maybe uh, do some shoulder exercises, you know, roll your roll your arms a little bit. Um uh, and try to clear your head a little bit as though a lot of time has passed. Uh, but what we're going to do now is try to unpack this uh, writing moment. And what I would suggest you do is find a place where you are um, not going be, to be interrupted. Uh, and then if we think about this space as a space where that has a desk, if where this is a blueprint looking from the top, uh, it has a desk where you can sit and write, and it has uh, some bookshelves that you can turn your back on when you're sitting there writing. So you're going to be writing, not reading. This is not a research activity. You're going to be turning your back on the books. You can even put a little sort of um, cordon sanitaire uh, between the distractions and the task, which is what you're going to be writing. And then what I would suggest, uh, and then um, we're going to change the metaphor from a space, a nice orderly space in which you can write, to uh, time. And if we think of it this way, then we have the first two minutes, the last five minutes, and the uh, intervening 20 minutes, which we've divided into two sections of 10 minutes. So what we know is we're going to have activities that last two minutes, 10 minutes, 10 minutes, and five minutes. And what we're gonna make is a paragraph in that time. The plan is to make a paragraph. And so now it's really, really important that we decide what is actually a paragraph. Um, and a paragraph I will define as at least six sentences and at most 200 words. We're going to write at least six sentences and we're going to write at most 200 words that says one thing and that one thing we're going to call the key sentence. And then it will um, support, I hope I have room here, I do. It will support, elaborate, or defend that one um, key sentence. So you've got a key sentence. You're going to write at least five sentences more than the key sentence. So the key sentence counts on the six. And then you will write, uh, but you will keep yourself to at most 200 words. And at some point you can go over, but then we'll be cutting off, wor we'll be cutting off words later. Um, so let's think about this very quickly here. Um, I'm going to give you two minutes to consider your key sentence. This is the same sentence that you just wrote. And ideally you would, it would it's the sentence that you wrote the night before, the evening before, and then you slept, you ignored it, you put it out of your mind, and then you showed up the next morning to write. Um, so what's going to happen is you will write at eight o'clock there, right at the start of your writing moment, or in this case, right when I start you writing. Uh, you'll take two minutes to consider that key sentence. And what I want you to do is consider whether or not this key sentence needs to be supported, elaborated, or defended. Why is it you can't just say this to the reader? 
Why is your qualified, intelligent peer reader, somebody that needs at least six sentences and at most 200 words of support, elaboration, or defense? That must be because the key sentence poses some difficulty for the reader. And there's really three possible things that can be hard about uh, a key sentence in a paragraph, and where it's the purpose of the paragraph to resolve that difficulty or to help the reader get over that difficulty, right? To help the reader uh, engage with this problem that the sentence poses. Um, one of them is that the sentence you're saying might be hard to believe. Oh, I can't really fit this in here, but we'll put it. The sentence may be hard to believe. And in that case, the paragraph will have to provide evidence that supports the claim that the key sentence makes. Right? So you're the if it's hard to believe, you're going to provide support. Um, the other thing that might be that might also happen, which is which is just as common in academic writing as saying something that's hard to believe. And I should actually say, I should make clear, we're not talking about something that is impossible to believe or something that the reader will be very, very resistant to believing. We're talking about something that the reader understands and just needs some evidence. So if it's just something as simple as saying that a company had a good year uh, financially, the reader will say, well, that, I can imagine a company having a good year financially. I just want to know what financials you're talking about. And so please give me the evidence, right? Uh, give me some reason to believe that this company did well. Like, tell me about its revenues, tell me about its sales, tell me about its growth on the market, and so forth, right? Um, give me some evidence and give me some good sources for that belief, right? Um, the other um, possibility is that the reader does not have a, does not see the problem as believing you but sees the problem as understanding. So it might be hard to understand. And in that case, you are going to elaborate. Right, this goes here, right, this goes there. Uh, this is often the case if you are defining terms or operationalizing terms in a theory, you might say sense-making is a retrospective process. And if that's what you're saying, then the reader may need help understanding exactly what you mean by retrospective or by process, maybe by sense-making as well. Um, so you're going to spend the paragraph defining your terms or just helping the reader understand what happened. The reader may, you may be saying something happened, like two companies uh, merged. The, comp the reader may not have any difficulty believing that happened, but needs to understand exactly how it happened, right? So you, you make a decision there. And then there's the third possibility, which is that the reader um, may not see the problem as believing or understanding you because the reader has already thought a great deal about this. The reader has already made up their mind. And so the hard thing for the reader is to agree with you. Right? This means you're going to have to defend what you say. Think of this as the difficulty. What is hard, right? It's hard to believe, hard to understand, or hard to agree. Uh, and then this is the what the paragraph is going to be doing. It's going to be supporting, elaborating, or defending. The key sentence, right? I hope that makes sense. That's the task. Now, so what's the task for those two minutes? The task for those two minutes is not to support, elaborate, or defend yet. The task is just to make the key sentence difficult in precisely the way that you are ready to support, elaborate, or defend it. So I want you to take two minutes when I start the timer. Uh, take two minutes to... Oops. Take two minutes here to rewrite the sentence in various ways, um, eventually settling on a particular way of doing it that pitches the sentence to the reader uh, so that the reader understands the difficulty. Um, the example I normally use is, 
if I wanted to say that sense making is sometimes a prospective process, and I know that my reader thinks sense making is always a retrospective process, then I know that I'm going to have to defend my position. So what I will say is some people think sense making is always a retrospective process. The reader immediately understands the rhetoric of that and knows that what I'm going to do is challenge the reader to think about it as something other than always retrospective, right? Uh, this gives me a chance to write a paragraph that defends the idea that it's sometimes a prospective process. So this is what you want to be doing during these two minutes is writing that key sentence that you came up with in the, in the previous five minutes. You're going to spend two minutes pitching it to the reader as something that is specifically hard to believe, hard to understand, or hard to agree with. And here we go. You have two minutes. Go. You have one minute left, one minute left. Remember, you want to end up with a sentence that's nice and clear and sets a nice problem that you're ready to tackle um, in prose. All right. So that is two minutes of that. Um, so you've come up with a sentence and uh, it may be hard to uh, understand, uh, possibly, although you shouldn't take uh, my word for whether or not it's hard to understand or not. It's, of course, your sense of the reader. What does the reader need? Does the reader need you to support this claim because they already understand it, but they need some evidence, or do they need to, you to elaborate it, or do they need you to defend it? Is this some sort of controversy, some sort of argument you're going to have with the reader? This is a decision you're making. Um, you are now going to get 10 minutes. Uh, and I have to... Oops. You're now going to get 10 minutes right here, um, to write as many sentences as you can. Uh, and I would encourage you to think of this as something that where the ideal is you can write maybe a sentence a minute. So write as many sentences as you can at a pace of about one a minute. And they, now they can be longer, they can be whatever you think is necessary to write. And you're going to write sentences that are easier to believe, understand, or agree with, all depending on what the problem is you've set yourself. You have to remember you're giving the reader um, materials that will help them to understand, believe, or agree with you, right? So uh, 10 minutes to write as many as you can. Now, it doesn't have to look like a paragraph. It doesn't have to look like prose uh, yet, but it should be sentences. So in that sense, it does have to be prose. You're writing sentences. You're not just writing words or bullets or anything like that. You are writing sentences that are easier to understand, believe, or agree with 
than your key sentence. Um, and if you have references or quotes or any materials like that, you can put those in here as well. That's fine. Just as whatever you know, right? And you have 10 minutes to do it. I will uh, remind you as you go where we're at and give you some extra things if you're running out of things to do. Um, but here we go. Are you ready? We start 10 minutes to write as many sentences as you can now. Two minutes have passed. You have eight minutes left. Notice how easy or hard this is. Um, and just keep working at it. Keep writing sentences. If you're getting stuck, sometimes it can help to rewrite sentences you have already written. Uh, but just so you're still writing. You're not just, you don't end up just sitting here thinking, doing nothing. Just keep writing.
and you're halfway through. You have five minutes left. Uh, ideally, you already have five sentences and you have at least five sentences more in you. Uh, like I say, it's perfectly fine to get a little bit stuck and then just write the same sentences you've already written before, just so you're still writing. You want to make sure that you're mostly writing at this point. You're not... Um, thinking or certainly not reading, not surfing the internet for ideas, or just writing things that are on your mind. And you have three minutes left. If I was your spinning coach, I would say three more. Come on, three more sentences. You can do it. And you have one minute left. If you have one more sentence in you, that is great. Uh, if not, rewrite one of the sentences you already have.
Okay, uh, the 10 minutes are up. And uh, one of the things I would really recommend you do at this point is to sort of feel how uh, or recognize how that felt. So did that feel like a long time? Did that feel like 10 minutes is just way too long to write 10 or 12 or 13 sentences? You just, you, you filled several pages with sentences or does it feel like that was not a, a lot of time at all? Does it feel like very a very constrained amount of time? And in the future, when you do this exercise, you can actually give yourself a little more, a little less time for that part of the exercise if need be. Uh, so those 10 minutes are not completely rigorous. But as a training exercise, it's very useful to set yourself some guidelines like that to bound your time and space. It's a really good way to work. Um, but reflect on that as you go. It, 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 some people like to do this entire exercise in 18 minutes instead of the 27 that I'm giving you. So that's another uh, thing that you can you would need to compress it a little bit. Now, the next thing we're going to do um, is let me uh, once again share the screen with you. The next thing we're going to do here <clears throat> is uh, we've spent 10 minutes writing. We're now going to spend 10 minutes composing. So you've spent 10 minutes writing. You're now going to spend 10 minutes composing. And what we mean by that is now, instead of thinking this is a room in which you're writing and as a time that you're spending writing, we're going to think of it actually as a page. So we're going to imagine uh, a page and we're going to say, what is a paragraph? A paragraph occupies about half a page. And it has, you know, these sentences that you're writing. And so you want it to look kind of like this, right? And then what you want to do is you want to make sure that it ends at a particular point. And that's where we have that in Word. We have that paragraph marker. Uh, it doesn't really matter how you mark it. Just make sure that you remember that it begins and then it keeps going and it ends. And this margin here doesn't mean anything. Right, the right margin doesn't mean anything. You're you just really got one big long line of prose, um, <clears throat> and that's what your paragraph is going to look like. What I want you to do is take the sentences that you've now sort of just jotted down and you've just generated. You've just written as many sentences as you can, and now you get to shape them into this paragraph. And I'm going to give you ten minutes to do it. Keep in mind that you've got a key sentence and it needs to go somewhere. Uh, for many people, the natural place is to put the key sentence at the beginning of the paragraph, but there's no need, there's no law that says it has to be uh, the first sentence. It could be the last sentence. It could be in the middle. <clears throat> it doesn't matter. It's whatever works stylistically. And that's why you're giving yourself 10 minutes to compose this paragraph so that it will... Um, so that it will uh, have leave the right impression on the mind of the reader, so that it will actually support, defend, uh, support, elaborate, or defend. And do please keep in mind that you have at most 200 words in which to do this. So this composition is not going to take more than 200 words. And what that means is it's not going to take the reader more than one minute to read. So the reader is going to have your, what you're really creating here is one minute of your reader's attention. You're taking uh, altogether 27 minutes, but now you're taking 10 minutes to put these materials that you've, that you've generated together in one minute of the reader's experience. And I want you to take that task seriously for 10 minutes. So you don't have to take it that seriously, but take it seriously for 10 minutes. What are you going to do with the reader's attention um, with one minute of your reader's attention? That, that is the idea. Uh, remember, you're trying to help the reader, support, elaborate, or defend. And Ezra Pound had a great way of putting this. He said, you should try to think, what is the simplest possible statement? So you've got all this material. You've got this claim that you want to make. You've got this knowledge you want to present. But what is the simplest possible statement of that in the minute of your reader's attention that you have? Here we go. Um, let me just, here we go. Um, here. 10 minutes, go.
you have five minutes left. That's half of the time that has been allotted. If you um, if you feel like you're done, some sometimes at this point people think they're done. Um, that's of course interesting, but don't just sit there and squander the time. Uh, tr start retyping the paragraph. Make a a manually produced, handmade copy of the paragraph you've got, and see how that see if that shows you anything about it. Uh, you've got time to try out different things, different positions for the key sentence, different ways of saying this. So don't just feel satisfied. You have another five minutes. You have half the time left. If you are using a word processor, um, that is that is perfectly natural. Uh, but what I just said uh, about retyping um, is a useful exercise, even if you could just copy paste and play with that. I mean, that's certainly one thing you can do, just copy paste it. But uh, making a physical copy manually is can be a useful exercise if you have time and you want to experiment with that. Two minutes left. Uh, remember that you, in those last two minutes, you want to produce something that is visually coherent on the page. So you want to make sure that any any sort of notes and jottings are cut away, maybe put on another page. You're trying to gather something that's going to look exactly, let's look clean. You're trying to make a clean copy. One paragraph, one minute of your reader's attention. You've got one minute left. And at the end of that, you want to make sure that you have something that is presentable.
That's it. Uh, that's 22 minutes of work we've done so far on the paragraph writing itself, set up with five minutes of work that you might have done the day before. Um, we've got five minutes left in the writing part of this. <clears throat> um, and what we're going to do now is we're going to recognize that this margin, as I mentioned earlier, is actually meaningless in the sense that it's just there because the page physically ends and the new line has to start somewhere. So what we really have is one line of sentences. That's what we've really got. And then it ends at the last sentence here, right? There's also a period there. Uh, and what you have done is you have chosen a series of words all in a row. And your, your um, instruction to the reader is read this word, then read this word, then read this word, then read this word. And your reader, of course, is going to be well-behaved. The reader knows how to read. And so knowing how to read means putting these words one at a time through their mind and letting them do to their imagination whatever it is that you have you have controlled, you have decided that they will do. And so uh, what we want to do now is figure out if we are being kind to the reader. We want to experience this experience that we have created for the reader, this uh, one minute of the reader's attention. We are going to test it on ourselves before we present it to the reader. We are going to read this paragraph out loud. Now, this, of course, requires that you are in an environment where reading out loud is not frowned upon, uh, is a, is, that is something that you can do. Uh, if not, of course, then what you would do is just read, uh, si um, you would mumble it maybe, read it sort of silently across your lips. Uh, but ideally, you would you would speak it uh, with the with the voice that you want these sentences to have. Um, so that's what you uh, that's what I'm going to ask you to do now is to read the paragraph uh, out loud. Um, and that should take a minute or two. Uh, if you're reading it quietly, it will take one minute usually if you read it inside your head. Uh, reading out loud takes a little longer sometimes, so it might take a minute or two. and that leaves you three or four minutes um, to react to that by fixing little things you might now notice because you because you've read it out loud. Maybe there's a sentence that needs to be broken up into two sentences because it's just too long before you draw a breath. Um, maybe you need some commas in there. So lots of different little things you notice. Uh, but I'm going to stop you after five minutes altogether. So you'll read it out loud and then just start polishing it until I say stop. Uh, and then what will have happened is you will have spent exactly 27 minutes working on this paragraph. So I'm going to start. You now read out loud.
You've now got three minutes to make this as good a paragraph as you possibly can. Uh, this is where you get to exercise your vanity, but only for a little bit. You can be a perfectionist, but you don't have all the time in the world. And remember that you have two minutes left. Uh, so you may think you're done, but you have time. And you should be using that time to make it just a little bit better. Um, keep in, keep really in mind that the um, that every minute you spend is uh, an act of kindness to your reader. You have one minute left. Is the half page you have made the best possible use of your reader's attention? And that is it. Uh, we have spent 27 minutes writing. Uh, what I would at this point really say is try to discipline yourself when you're doing this. So you started exactly at whatever, eight o'clock. Uh, you stopped exactly at 827. Now you're gonna take a three minute break. Um, and by a three minute break, what I mean is you're gonna do nothing uh, and doing nothing of course is very hard, uh, but it's very important that you now stop working on the paragraph. So don't be reading this paragraph anymore. And also don't start on the next thing you're going to do. Uh, so maybe you're going to check, check some emails or start reading a book, or maybe you have a meeting or whatever. Uh, but don't proceed on to the next thing. Experience the fact that you uh, had more time, but you're not going to use it on your writing. Uh, what what I the, the reason I say that is, it will give you uh, a sense of your freedom. And that is really what you want. You want to experience writing as freedom. You chose to spend these 27 minutes to produce one minute for your reader, one minute that was the best possible use of their time to get this idea across. Um, you chose exactly the words and exactly the order that you thought was the best possible way of doing it. Now, of course, you didn't create the perfect paragraph. No paragraph is perfect. It never happens. Uh, but next time you do it, you will be better at it. And the time after that, you will be better at it. You will become better and better and better at spending 27 minutes producing one minute for your reader's attention uh, that will get an idea across and that will open it to their qualified criticism. That's what you want to be able to do. Um, so that's the end of the, the writing part of this. Um, 
But we're not quite done because one of the things we want to do is we want to prepare you to get some criticism as well, um, to get some feedback on it. And um, the thing I want to emphasize with that is that feedback is not a judgment. It is an experience. What you want to try to do is take this paragraph that you've now written uh, and present it to a reader in such a way that the feedback you get will be an experience of being read. So you will get a sense of what this paragraph was like to read. Um, and the best way of doing that uh, is to, uh, actually, I should start by saying you should, you should, the best way of doing this is to start with a paragraph you've written as deliberately as we just did. So don't write, uh, don't write in a haphazard way and then ask a reader to tell you whether or not it's any good or what you even mean. Uh, write a very deliberate paragraph where you chose what you wanted to say. You chose a rhetorical posture to support, elaborate, or defend. So you know what you want to say. You know how you are, you how you think you're saying it. You know what you think the reader will find difficult. Is it hard to believe, hard to understand, or hard to agree with? And you will, um, and you and you've read it out loud, so you even have a sense of how it should sound. And so that's going to make the following feedback exercise meaningful. What I what I suggest you do is you find somebody who represents this reader, so somebody that is a peer, somebody who's also knowledgeable about the subject, somebody that you would want this feedback from, somebody where it will be meaningful to get this feedback, and then you're going to do the following. First of all, uh, you're going to uh, decide whether or not this feedback session is going to take three, six, or nine minutes. Uh, this is a decision you make, and so you're asking for three, six, or nine minutes of your reader's time. Um, so you pick up here, and then you say, I need three minutes of your time, or I need six minutes of your time, or I need nine minutes of your time. Regardless of how much time you give them, and you can experiment with this to see what works best for you and your chosen reader, you have a program to get through. The first thing your reader will do is read out loud. So they're going to do exactly what you did 22 minutes into your writing moment. They're going to take the paragraph and they'll just start at one end and they will end at the end and they will just read it. What they're going to do is read it out loud to you uh, and you will not react. You're not going to smile, nod, or in any way give them any information about how much you're enjoying this or not. Uh, sometimes it's not as enjoyable as we hoped. Uh, you're just going to let them read it out loud. A good suggestion here is to um, let them read it and watch them from the side so they can't see your face while they're reading. Uh, if you're doing it online, of course, a really good suggestion is that you as the writer turn off your camera. Uh, leave the reader's camera on, though, because it's nice to look at the reader's face to see what's going on on their face while they're reading it out loud. That's uh, that's useful information to you. Um, the next thing they're going to do is they're going to say what the key sentence is. Remember, there's a right answer to that because you develop the key sentence the day before, or so you came up with it the day before, you developed it in these two minutes at the beginning. So you made, you're very clear about the key sentences. During this act of composition, you put the key sentence in a particular place in the paragraph, um, but you didn't hide it there. The idea was to make sure that the reader would come away from the paragraph knowing what the one thing this paragraph was trying to say. So you're going to uh, hope that they get that right. You know what the right answer is. They're going to say what they think the key sentence is. You will not tell them whether or not they're right. You will simply register whether or not they're right. And maybe they'll even think out loud a little bit about it. They'll say, I don't quite know what the key sentence is. It could be the second sentence. It could be the last sentence. I can't quite decide. But they will make some um, gesture at the key sentence, try to say what they think this whole paragraph is trying to accomplish. It will then tell you what the posture of the paragraph is. And that is this question, is it supporting, elaborating, or defending? 
And what the reader is really telling you is whether or not they feel like you're trying to get them to believe, understand, or agree with you. So does, when I was reading this paragraph, did I feel like you were trying to get me to believe it, to understand it, or agree with you? Right? Um, and then you've got uh, one last thing. And now it really depends on whether or not you chose to use three, six, or nine minutes, because as the time goes, like, this can take three minutes and so you don't have any more time. Uh, but if you give six or nine minutes, you might have some time left over. And the time that you have left over at the end, it should be used for the reader to not tell you anything evaluative about the paragraph, not say whether it's good or bad as writing, and not even say whether or not, well, you could say whether the ideas are good or bad, but not to reflect on the writing and not to say, oh, this is really interesting or this is really good. Try not to be judgmental as the reader here. Uh, what you want the reader to do is to um, tell you what's going on in their mind now, right? Are they believing you? Are they understanding you? Are they agreeing with you? What are they thinking? Uh, what do they think would be the next thing that could come after this paragraph, right? Or if this is a paragraph taken out of the context where something came before, uh, what, what, um, what, where would this fit in? What do they, what do they imagine came before? Uh, so you want to just let the reader open up about how they feel about the ideas, how they feel about this, this, um, this argument, uh, but they, you don't want them to be evaluating you. You don't have time. You don't have space really to be, have somebody tell you you're a good writer or a bad writer at this point. Uh, what you want to do is just experience how your paragraph reads. That's the idea of this feedback. Um, so that's what you would do. You would find someone to do that with. Like I say, you can do that online. Uh, you can do that uh, in person. And the important thing is to make sure that your reader is a peer. So somebody that is qualified to give you uh, this kind of reaction, somebody who could understand, uh, believe, or agree with you. All right. Well, that's the end of the uh, workshop. Um, so uh, I hope that this has been an experience for you, a, a helpful experience for you, one that you can use uh, going forward. And of course, the uh, the whole uh, point here is that you do this again and again and again and again. Uh, every time you do it, you'll become a better writer because you're deliberately going at the problem of writing and you have solved the problem of knowing by choosing something you knew very well last week. So you give yourself those 27 minutes to focus on writing it uh, properly. As my typing teacher used to say, look to the left, look to the right, hands on the keyboard, type, type, type. Uh, practice makes perfect. Um, I wish you all the best with it. <laughs>